Let's bring in child and adolescent psychologist Claire Rowe for more insight on this. Claire, thank you for your time. We keep hearing how tough Australians are doing it and there's plenty of people expressing that publicly. But what's the reality? What do the figures tell you? What are the, what are the consults like in psychologist rooms and, and what feedback are you getting from your own profession? Yeah, hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Um, look, as I've been saying for quite a while now, I mean, everyone in my profession has been kind of screaming as loud as we can about the catastrophic effects of this. Um, it is the parallel pandemic, but it will become the primary pandemic. I mean, when we open up eventually in October, November, whenever it's going to be, the, the mental health issues, particularly for our children um, and the academic impact of this, uh, school closures will last for years and it will become the primary pandemic I think um, not the secondary or parallel one as it is at the moment so um, yeah look I, I you know and the director of a, a private psychology clinic for children specifically here in Sydney and we're overrun and we can't keep up and we're getting burnout from psychologists and we're we need help in the profession in dealing with this so anyway are you okay day look it's a great initiative it always has been for yeah. many years and um, but we hit it this year and it kind of I don't know it's like are you okay are are any of us okay? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a real, um, yeah, it, it's a it's a funny one this year, actually. Uh, are you okay, Dave? And I think I've tried to change the question a little bit today in my practice to be, are you going to be okay? Mm. Because I think there's a difference between are you okay? Well, no, <laughs> no, we're all not okay. None of us are okay. Do you think you're going to be okay? Okay, yeah, most of us could say, look, I think we will. As soon as we open up, I'll be okay. And then we need to catch those ones that say, no, I don't think I will be. And those are the ones we really listen to. Yeah, that's interesting. And there are a lot of people who probably need it said to them who are saying it to other people. So maybe what we should be saying is, are you okay? Because I'm not too flash, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think I read a lovely quote this week that was really kind of hit me and it said, look, just remember, people don't pretend to be depressed generally, but they do pretend to be okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. and I think the other question is, okay, we can ask, are you okay? Um, and what if that person says, yeah, yeah, mate, I'm fine. Um, how do we know? How do we know if they really are? And do we just, you know, do we continue to follow up? Do we continue to just check in with them? And I think the answer is yes. We go, okay, great. You know, but we give them another call next week and we have another chat with them. Um, and so we follow up with it and we listen to them. And I think sometimes we feel like there's not a lot we can do, um, but actually that phone call or text, even it's a text full of emojis to someone sometimes that can make a difference just to know that someone else is thinking of you at these times of isolation i know for myself can make a world of difference and put a smile on my face that day yeah very true and i, I wish we hadn't have come up with in january of 2020 the word social distancing because we should be ODing on social connection it's physical distancing we should be keeping uh, steer clear of so true. That's such a great point, actually. Absolutely. Physical distancing is out. Social uh, connection is in. And these days, like, we have so many great ways to do that. Thank goodness for technology at the moment. Yeah. And there's so many great creative Zoom ideas I've heard of in the last month. I'm, I'm seeing friends do Zoom brunches and Zoom dinners where they order each other dinner and they all sit down and have their dinner together and <laughs> surprise each other. My kids did a Zoom uh, scavenger hunt with some other kids in some other houses and we all got online together and did a scavenger hunt hunt around the house. And so if you Google it, there's some really creative things people have come up with actually using technology to stay connected. I think it's brilliant. Yes, it might be brilliant, but my five-year-olds have learned how to conduct a Zoom meeting and begin a Zoom meeting and turn their, their sound and picture off. It's a nightmare. I don't know where that's going to go from. I'll go to. Michael Carr Gregg has stated this week that given what our kids have been through, there should be a psychologist in every school in Australia. I guess he was sort of... Um, uh, exaggerating the point, but clearly what our kids have been through, they are going to need a whole help of assistance. They will. Um, I'm not even sure whether that goes far enough. Uh, at the moment, in terms of registered psychologists that are clinically trained to deal with some of the issues we're seeing, like self-harming, um, most of the private schools will have a psychologist employed, uh, but the New South Wales Education Department usually has uh, counsellors that dot around school. So they're in a yeah. school a day, you yeah, know, they need, they're there they on need Wednesdays. They to work a lot harder. I've, got, I've run out of time, Claire, but thank you very much for yours this evening. Thanks, Chris.